Now we go to multiplying, and multiplying can happen in two directions. From the inside to the outside, or from the outside to the inside. And now we will have multiplying from the outside. I met the LAMA, and LAMA stays for Laboratorio di Monitoraggio e Modellistica Ambientale per lo Sviluppo Sostenibile, in English LAB for Environmental Monitoring and Modeling for Sustainable Development. It is in Florence. I was there and I was so impressed by it. This institution... Excuse me. I excuse you. <laughs> Only once. All right. Only one, Only one excuse. Okay. Good. Mm, I was there and I was very, very impressed. And I interviewed, among others, Valentina Grasso. And I am very, very happy that she accepted to talk with us, to be with us today and talk about what LAMA does for schools. So LAMA, she will perhaps tell us a bit about LAMA, what LAMA does, and also how she prepares and monitors interventions with the LAMA programs in Italian schools in Tuscany. So I am very, now, very... Uh, Valentina, good morning. Good morning to you all. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can thank you. you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So go ahead. Okay, I go. For me also was a pleasure to meet her and have the possibility to have this chat about your project also and to discuss some of the topics that we work on on the communication side and on the education side. Um, can you see my presentation? Is everything fine, Cesare? Uh, can you put in full screen mode? Please? Yes. Yes, of course, I will do that. Thank you very much. That's OK. Yes, OK. OK, just a brief introduction. I am um, a researcher at the Italian National Research Council. And uh, my background is about science communication. So I started working at the National Research Council in Florence 20 years ago, almost, and since 2010, last 13 years, I've been working with the Consorzio Lama, and I'm going to explain you know, what it is. <coughs> I had the chance to work about communicating uh, topics like environmental risk, climate change, and uh, weather, actually, weather, um, extreme weather, weather warning, I mainly work with the weather forecaster and climatologist, so this was a great chance for me to work with them, to share knowledge and to learn from each other. Um, so LAMA, it is a consortium, as Laura was saying, and uh, environmental monitoring and modeling laboratory. It is a consortium uh, between the Italian National Research Council much of the people working inside the structure are CNR researchers. And uh, <coughs> the other partner is the government of Tuscany, the Tuscany region. So it has like a double uh, nature, let me say, double pillars in its activity, the scientific research and also the services for the, um, uh, the government and the citizens of the government. It's not just um, the topics, it's not just the weather, even if weather is the one that we're talking about today, weather and climate, but also LAMA works on um, um, uh, land modeling, environmental modeling, uh, with a geographic information system and database about environmental um, variables, and also oceanography, so working on the uh, monitoring the state of the Mediterranean mainly, and doing projects about that. Um, that's it. Well, it's interesting, uh, Laura asked me to tell something about how it, uh, it was constituted, the LAMA Consortium. Well, it was in 1997, and it was after, actually, a major flood that happened in Tuscany in June um, uh, 1997. And after that, in the north of Tuscany, there were like 13 fatalities and a lot of, uh, um, actually, damage to um, many cities, uh, small villages in the north of Tuscany. 
And after that event, it was like, we would say now a flash flood, so very devastating one. And um, after that, uh, the, also the government and the research, uh, the, the National Research Council started to investigate, uh, well, no, uh, started to feel the need to settle like a research agency that was able, that could be able to um, uh, make um, regional studies about the impact of climate change and also uh, set up um, monitoring and modeling uh, infrastructure to help the government to face the impact of climate change. So it was a project that was developed after a major uh, flood, uh, a tragic event. So. Afterwards, uh, many years later, it became a public uh, consortium, as I was saying, with these two partners, the research partner and the Tuscany government. And uh, we are now about uh, 60 people working in the lab, and um, also other research institutes are now part of the of the of the LAMA. We have we started with an institute of biometeorology. Now we have an institute about the study of the sea and oceanography, and uh, we hope that there will be maybe other uh, other collaboration that will increase the competencies and the area of expertise of the consortium. So um, we will talk about the weather, and now we're doing some uh, weather literacy, let me say, because we are talking about environmental literacy, and I, have, I, I am happy to share some of the things that we do here, and some of our approach, and also I will be happy to have a discussion with you all, and many of the things that were presented this morning were really interesting also the contribution of the University of Milano, if I'm not wrong, was really interesting about the critical thinking. So we work in, uh, in, in weather, weather forecast. LAMA is the public uh, weather service for the Tuscan region. So it is the weather service that is in charge of the weather warnings. So we do also weather forecast for the public, like every day. Uh, and uh, of course, we um, we have um, uh, we also have uh, numerical models, weather models, atmospheric models that are uh, run here in the labs. Um, because of the weather, is a very, very uh, interesting, uh, interesting, very um, is a topic uh, uh, very present in the communication and also with the development of the mobile phone even uh, more than before. We all, always uh, um, take a great attention to communication. We have social media to, um, not just to um, um, diffuse weather forecast, but also to um, help to understand, for people to understand the different focus of the weather and climate and also the project and activities that we do. And for example, in the last two years, we, we We've been setting up a streaming, for example, every Friday at um, 3.30. We do a streaming from the weather, uh, the LAMA weather operating room. Uh, we do have also a, a sort of TV uh, features that we do streaming with the national TV and local TV every morning. And also we do the streaming from the weather room with people that can intervene with question and answer from Facebook and YouTube. So we also um, had a lot of, uh, in the history of LAMA, a lot of requests from school to you know, have some um, lessons. You know, the schools were asking uh, my colleagues to come in the school and you know, have a, a lesson about uh, the, you know, how the weather forecasts are done, how it works uh, the weather forecasting, with, which are the things that we do daily. And, um, so for many years we are engaged in this kind of activity and uh, um, mainly uh, we do receive classes and visits here at the laboratory 
because it's more fun for the class also, because they have the chance here to visit the, the real weather operating room, and so to meet the people, and to see the, you know, like the, 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 the actual set in some way that they see on TV screen, and to have a better understanding. We do also open days, we participate in science festival, as many other science organizations. Um, just to focus on this aspect of education about the weather, um, the proposal that we do for the classes is for the, um, all the different uh, level of school, for primary school, like kids from 6 to 10 years old. Well, we just ask them to, to bring um, kids from the last two years, so from like 8 to 10 years old, otherwise they are really too, 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 too small and the approach of course is totally different. So we have like a meteorological classic lesson that is like more frontal lessons about how the weather forecasts are run every day, which is the science behind, and then they come to visit the the weather operating room and this for primary school, middle school and high school. But then we have the, the most requested format, uh, that is a format that is called Who Want to be a Forecaster? This is for middle and high school, and uh, in this uh, it's a two hour and a half visit of our laboratory. We have at first a lessons, uh, and more, like more frontal lessons, where me and one of the forecaster, which we um, discuss with the students about well, at first I ask them if they follow the weather and where, which kind of medium they use to follow the weather, if they're interested about it, if they know something about weather warning, if they ever experienced one, and so on and so forth. And then one of the, my colleagues uh, explain how they, which are the basics, the science basis of the weather forecasting, what can be actually predicted, and what is very difficult to predict, like for example, thunderstorm, and so on and so forth. And then in the other half of the, in the last hour and half, they actually um, pretend to be a forecaster. They come up, for this, this is our, um, this is the place where I'm in now, actually, is our meeting room. We have like computers and they have to uh, together group it in a um, group of five, four or five people. They work in um, filling, completing a weather balloting for Tuscany. They have to choose uh, like, um, uh, in that create uh, an ideal forecasting um, service and they, in the end, uh, have to present it uh, in the uh, real weather operating room. And in the end, uh, we do um, an editing of all the recording, uh, and we edit uh, the final uh, product, and we um, publish on YouTube and on the website. Maybe Cesare, can you share? With, this is a kind of trailer, uh, but it gives you an idea of the, uh, the various uh, uh, steps of the on this format. Do you want to run the video, Cesare? Yes. Oh. It is this working. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, show the, the... Oh, okay. Come potete vedere, la crisi è parzialmente nuvolosa, soprattutto 
Buongiorno a tutti, un caro saluto qui dal Consorzio Lama in collaborazione con Bomberigi. Vediamo le previsioni del tempo di oggi e di domani. Avremo la Toscana prevalentemente nuvolosa, quasi completamente. E nella costa di qua. Sarà molto soleggiato e giù a sud sarà nuvoloso, al centro pioverà, di qua ci sarà una tempesta, su ci sarà nebbia e quindi non andate al mare. I mari sono poco mossi al centro e caldi più al nord. Uh, sulle coste, uh, invece proprio di sud a sud della Toscana, ci troviamo uh, molte nuvole. Come possiamo vedere il centro Toscana è molto più, è, è più nuvoloso e con alte precipitazioni. Grazie delle vostre attenzioni, un cordiale saluto e arrivederci. hands-on activities not that they became available or doing a focus forecast due to hours but uh, it is nice for them to be in the feet of the forecaster and to you know to, to pretend to be one and also to you know have the timing and also on so it is um, It is a very successful, I would say, activity. We had really in the last, uh, uh, we've been doing that since uh, uh, 2010. So we really had a lot of classes coming in. At the beginning, we were doing that once every week with 50 uh, students every week coming in. But it's a very high impact. Now we're doing that twice a month <laughs> because it's very hard to manage. But I mean, a lot of people, are, students are coming in. And we're also evaluating, uh, you know, in some way the visits. So we kind of, you know, asking the students if the activity was engaging and challenging, if in some way they learn new things from the stuff that we try to communicate if the meeting announced their interest in the topics and if the, um, our uh, you know, uh, presentations were clear and easy to follow and also some open question about that. I don't want to go through all the graphics, just to say that the video actually, so this uh, forecasting activity is the one that is more engaging as you will see, uh, you know, for example, uh, the um, increase in interest uh, was also very high with the uh, video and with the, um, uh, the format of the experiment. Uh, 
but also, uh, for example, uh, so here, the engagement, uh, we evaluated the engagement by the different modules, and you would see that very good engagement was the video one activity. So meaning that these hands-on, you know, more engaging uh, activity are very well rated by students. And um, uh, also, in concluding, I want to uh, introduce another activity that we do just with the last year of the high school, so uh, students that are around 18, 19 years old, and especially with uh, um, um, uh, high school, the um, research scientifico, so like mathematics and science high school, where they have a more strong background in mathematics. Why we do that? Because we go more deeper in the uh, in the um, uh, concept of the theory, the cause theory, and why weather forecasts are so uncertain, uncertain, and why it is hard to predict the weather and the, the future weather, and what are the, also the mathematic basis of this uncertainty, and also we engage them in a game that is called the weather game that is aimed at making them deal with this uncertainty and take decision under uncertainty. And this is, I think, is a very important activity because we are actually surrounded by a lot of misinformation about weather forecasting, not only weather forecasting, a lot of stuff, but we are talking about that. And the use of weather application and the precision uh, that the mobile application give us in uh, very precise weather forecast for our small cities at every hour of the day actually has no science basis at all. But we are used to receive this information in this format. And uh, for the guy and for everyone, actually, it gives the illu illusion of certainty. So we make them reflect that even if they receive a very precise information, like a weather forecast, you know, for example, for uh, tomorrow, two days after tomorrow, for their own uh, precise cities or village, well, at every hour of the day, this precision is not accuracy. Accuracy and precision are very different stuff, and they are not really aware about that. So we wanted to make them more aware about that, which are the limits of predictability, describe some of the basics of the cow theory, and also, as I was saying before, uh, make them experiencing with the game how to deal with this uncertainty. So I, I do this activity with uh, one of the, some of the colleagues of mine who also have a background in mathematics. And also, we run a presentation, as you, you, you see some of the slides here, that also is, goes deep, actually. Deep, no, it's not the right word, but present some of the mathematics behind this. So we, um, we, we talk about the, the Lorentz and the butterfly effect, and the chaos theory, and the um, difficulty in predictability under certain circumstances, and how the forecaster manage this uncertainty using the ensemble forecasting, the probabilistic forecasting. And how can uh, a major, for example, of the person who have to take decision um, using this probability forecasting uh, can act. Uh, I just introduced these slides because I don't know if you are aware about that, probably not, as I was not aware at all before coming to work in this place. This is a graph, uh, just to give you an idea, of uh, the product of an ensemble forecasting system. Uh, in the upper part of the black graph, but you see, uh, this is of this morning, you know. This is the prediction of the uh, temperature at... Uh, um, uh, in the atmosphere, you know, which is the um, uh, predicted temperature in the next 14 days. And the red line is the average, the climate average. All the other uh, thin colored line are the 50 different runs that the 
plausibility model, the ensemble model, do to predict uh, the, uh, mm, uh, the evolution of the temperature for Florence for the next 14 days. This is very, I think, quite clear that for the first two, three days, all these lines are very coherent. So the information that comes from the prediction model is quite coherent, and so it gives it us a quite more certainty about how will be the, the temperature in two, three days. But it's very clear that as much as you go far in the prediction time, in one week or 10 days, you will see that all these thin lines are not coherent at all. Some of these lines are uh, above the mean, the red line, meaning that a lot of the run of the ensemble model predicts that the temperature in one week will be above the mean for Florence, but other lines are below the red line, so the prediction is for colder than the average. So I show you this to see how can you use a weather application that gives a single value for the temperature in Florence, or whatever place you want to choose, in one week, and think that all these uncoherent and dispersed line, well, you just pick one of them, you know. So how this information is actually a very, very much uncertainty. In the low part of the graph, you have the same stuff for precipitation. So this is to give them an idea how it is difficult to predict weather parameters when you go far in time. So um, after all these, uh, you know, um, more um, frontal lesson and explanation of how it works, we involved them in a game that is called the weather game. It's a role-playing game. It was not invented by us, but is an activity that is is proposed by ECMWF, that is a European Center for uh, Forecast in Europe, and uh, it is a game that is proposed also to forecaster. So they pretend to be the mayor of a city, and uh, actually. Um, um, there is, we, we tell them that there is an important event and they have to take decisions based on weather forecast. And uh, um, this forecast, uh, of course, in case of bad weather, this, this event will be a failure, of course. So they can buy an insurance to protect against the bad weather condition or they can choose to take the risk. Uh, which is the rational choices. There is a rational choices, there is a better you know, behavior, and we have to maximize the right choices to be reelected, because if you, you know, in, they have like 10 turns in the game, you know, this um, is randomly realized. So if they, you know, do the wrong choice every time, at the end, as a mayor, they won't be reelected, so they will lose the job. So it is a competition, a competition also among the students. We split the students in three or six groups, and each group is a city council um, with a mayor, a mayor that has a budget, and uh, um, this budget is different for different cities. There is a small city, a medium city, and a big city. And also, oh, they have, um, we use uh, dice, uh, to um, simulate the probability of precipitation or, or, or snowing, as, uh, as you prefer. And uh, we have six phases, so we have 17%, 34, 50, 60, um, 7, and 84. And depending on the probability of precipitation, they have to decide if they want, for that event, want to buy an insurance to face the probability of, the, of bad weather, and they have different costs. If uh, uh, they um, had a loss, so if they do not buy the insurance and the event happens, actually, well, they will go, uh, they will face a loss. Um, after 10, ten turns, actually, uh, we um, 
rate how the every group, group behaves, and we have a winner, and the winner is the one that maximizes the, the cost loss ratio of this. Um, as I was saying, these costs are not equal. Uh, so the big, c the small city have uh, 300 euros uh, um, every every turn uh, as cost of the insurance. The uh, c b city, the middle one, 500. The bigger city, 700. While the losses are the same for every city. This is to simplify. Otherwise, it was too difficult to make calculation. I was. Um, well, to be informed, actually, if uh, about the weather condition, they will rely upon LAMA, and the LAMA will deliver them a probability of precipitation. Um, so, how does it work? Uh, in every turn, we throw the dice, so we will starting say, okay, for today we have a 84 probability of precipitation. What do you want to do? Do you want to buy the insurance? To protect against this, this event that is predicted that has a 84 probability to happen, or you don't want to buy the insurance. And they have to discuss inside the group and then decide what to do. When uh, they have decided if they want to protect themselves and the city or not to spend to buy the insurance, well, we throw the dice to see if the event happens or not. Of course, to every probability of precipitation, each probability of precipitation have, has a different dice. You know, the 84 one that we are seeing is a dice that have five uh, faces of the dice with a uh, bad weather, just one with a nice weather, depending on the probability, of course. Okay, these are, we use an Excel to uh, actually um, trace all the, uh, all the behavior of the different, um, uh, um, the different team and if they are doing fine or not. And I won't go through all the mechanisms if then you are interested, we can talk that later. But as you see in this, uh, um, Table in this schedule in this table, you see the one of the game players. You know, in the end, we underlined that there is actually a maximization a maximization of the behavior that is in the line with the CSI, the critical success index. This is the way to maximize the results, and it depends, of course, of the. Um, cost loss ratio. The, this index goes from zero to one. Actually, one is the maximum. As much as uh, one of the team is um, closer to one, uh, they will be uh, the winner of the game. But actually, this is just uh, for us. This is just, uh, which is the aim and the objective, is to make them reflect on actually how they have been deciding between them, how much the decision it is influenced by the behavior of the other team, how much the decision is influenced on what happened in the turn before. If you, for example, uh, protected, uh, decided to buy the insurance and then the then event uh, did not happen in the end, in the next turn, you will be less, uh, you know, um, you, you will be, it will be less probable that you will use, uh, uh, that you will buy the insurance, because each one of us is influenced by the previous behavior, and also by the behaviors of the other people people surrounding us. And it's also for us a way to make them reflect how the um, decision uh, under uncertainty are difficult and how every one of us has a different risk perception. So every one of us uh, would take a different risk depending on the, uh, their personal choices, cultural background, uh, scientific background, subjectivity, uh, and also from the type of event that uh, they have to face, and also how our behavior is not rational 
on its soul. And in many times, as we were saying this morning, it is influenced by bias, the cognitive bias and psychological, psychological shortcuts that actually make this rational decision, decision uh, not rational at all. So, well, that was the thing that Laura told me to ask me to share, and I hope that was interesting for you. And these are my um, details, and um, that's it. I, lo I love this. Thank you so much for this talk. Thank you for the video, which I loved. I hope we have it. Can we play? Yeah. I hope uh, that we have it. And uh, what I find fantastic about this institute and the activities with school is precisely having school students do activities which teach them about uncertainty, the weather, etc., rather than learning frontally on the blackboard something. So I like this approach very much, and I understand why schools are so enthusiastic, you know, that they go to Lama and go to, to do these activities and learn, and even the forecasting activity is so good for them to get um, conscious of weather and conscious of difficulties in forecasting. So I really love this program, and I want to open the discussion, if it's possible, we can have a discussion. Uh, Valentina can stay. Can you stay for a while? Thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, and we also see on the other side Alberto Ortolani, who will give the other talk later on on the mathematics of the weather. He will try to explain us poor people with not so much mathematical training, even the two of us. <laughs> I, I exaggerate. Uh, but he will t tell us about the mathematics of the weather, and I'm very happy to have him too. But for the moment, we would like to discuss still with Valentina and ask questions. Yes. Yes. Manuela. Yes. It's very important for interact. Yes. Uh, I am a... Uh, I am a teacher, Italian teacher. I speak uh, English uh, very bad, so if uh, you don't uh, know, <laughs> I speak in Italian. <laughs> yes, because uh, uh, you, I want to know if uh, you work only with uh, uh, Toscana uh, school or if it's possible, because we are from a uh, high school in, uh, near Milan. And uh, if it's possible, uh, work uh, also in, uh, in uh, Lombardia uh, with uh, your program. Uh, we, we mainly work with Toscana School just because it, it is closer, you know, it's easy yeah. for them to come here. But we have in the last year school coming from abroad. So if you want to bring your students here, uh, for example, during a school trip. In yes, Rome. yes. Sometimes, I, I, it happens. Sometimes it happens. We had schools from the south of Italy also, from Campania, from uh, the Marche, from Veneto. And, uh, but actually, to just give you an idea, we are just fully crowded for this year. There's no space left mm. from here to June. Because every, every day is already booked. Because no, for, yeah, the, yeah. for the next year, for yeah. suppose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yes. For the next year, you can, uh, I will give you the detail. Uh, okay. You have to write the email or to me. Or okay, the, okay. Because we, have, we can arrange. Every year, we have a trip uh, in uh, Tuscany. Uh, also this year in Umbria, but uh, um, is possible uh, have uh, a stop in uh, in Tuscany. So is possible uh, booked for the next uh, for the next yeah. year. Okay, on uh, www.lamat.toscany. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is a section. The mail. Okay. Uh, which you have to write is didattica. Mm? Didattica at. Mm? Chiocciola. Lama.toscana.it. Okay. Okay. Or, or my email, grasso chiocciola lama.toscana.it. And uh, I didn't mention that before, <coughs> but all these activities are free for school, of course. There is no fee at all. They just come here. <coughs> Very good. <coughs>
Okay, thank you. Mm, one aspect that I find really interesting is, of course, this handling under uncertainty, as you said, and this mayor making the decision insurance or no insurance, which actually is very close to what we discussed yesterday in the game Genova, that there are the ships going down, and then you have to decide what is the insurance. It's a slightly different question, but it has to con it connects the historical fact that risk and insurance are actually parallel. You know, the concept of risk arises with the problem of whether you insure or not whatever the ships. So this is very beautiful. And also, I think one could make the continuation after this activity with the die, etc., one could in introduce some conceptual framework, you know. So here is just activity, hands-on, and playing, and making decisions, and acting under uncertainty. But it motivates, right after that, the introduction of some concepts to discuss about what happened. Who, who was a good mayor, who was not, why, how could you improve, etc., etc. So you could in, use it to introduce some mathematical basics of risk, expected value, and uh, yeah. expected hazard. We, we try. Excuse we try to do that. Uh, we, 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 uh, as I was saying before, for example, we do not explain at the be beginning uh, what is each of these uh, um, critical sex index, you know, the CSI, yes. that is the key to optimize the choices. And uh, um, we will discuss that later. And also for us, it, it is interesting to make them reflect on how they actually took that decision. Yes. yes, so this is fantastic and it's experience-based learning. You know, there are conceptual frameworks for forms of learning. So this experience-based, but after the experience, one could have some conceptualization so that it's accompanied by a minimum of theory about uncertainty, risk, etc. <coughs> Sorry that I have this cold. <coughs> are there other questions? comments. One question that I have is whether when they do the weather forecasting, before that they are instructed in some way about what the weather is or they just go and do the weather forecasting? No, 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 no. We, we have like a one hour, one hour and a half of uh, explanation of, uh, of course, what is the weather, the difference between climate and weather, and uh, what, uh, uh, what is the way in which we uh, do the weather forecast. So the observing uh, uh, instruments, the satellite, the radar, huh. the, uh, 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 also the, you know, how do we measure temperature, oh. how do we measure rain. In, in one and hour? The instruments are precise or not. One hour and a half. Ah, yeah. wow. And also explaining that, just giving them an idea of the process of it. Yeah? You know, explaining them that after monitoring the modeling, you know, to predict how these uh, parameters are going to change yeah. in the next future. And then we also underline that uh, very often the weather forecast that they, um, uh, that they see on their mobile phone are not forecasts that are made by some human uh, person doing that, you know, that are automatic forecasts from the models. And if uh, even the science really, um, you know, did a lot of progress in the last uh, 30, 50 years because of also the computation capability and also the science, um, the progression of science, and all this stuff, because atmosphere is chaotic, it's anything is so, uh, nothing is sure when we talk about the weather. So you need to be aware that what are you looking at is not the truth, but is the most, you know, the better chance that, or a model, or in the best, yes. better case, a forecaster that evaluates if that model was more performative or less performative, gives you uh, the right uh, weather forecasting. We try to give an idea of all these things. 
Uh -huh. So one thing that I asked, uh, you know, we did this uh, temperature in August in Germany, and in one school, I asked, okay, what do you think how they measure the temperature in August in Germany? <laughs> and there was silence, and then one student was so courageous and said, well, you go to, with a thermometer in one place, always the same, the thermometer, and see, you know, the temperature and write it down, which was good enough, but so far away from what really happens with temperature, I think that we need to understand better how temperature is measured. And this should happen in school. This is useful stuff. We learn so much stuff which is useless in school. This would be something that is really applicable and useful. How do you measure temperature? What does it mean, the temperature in August in Germany? So other more comments? Congratulations for your presentation. Thank you very much for the job. Where are you from? Where yeah, are you? My name is Jaime. I'm a teacher of science in Granada, Spain. And I would like to know if it's available the app for the student of the game of the weather. Uh, it is the, the, the game of the weather? Yes, it's the available. The weather is not, is not an app. Oh, no, no, it's you know, we have like, real dice so that yeah. the that's hands on. That's in the room with the die. Okay, okay, okay. It, yeah. it could be easily transformed in an app. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have seen in the in, in the web that there is uh, rules about to play with the game. It's okay. No, you're asking. You, he looked. You looked up. I have been in the internet that there is information of the, of the game of the weather. So there is the rules mm -hmm. in, the, in the internet. It's OK. The rules are in the internet, but the game is ah, still oh, the rules. Uh, the, rules okay. the rules, the rules. Okay. Yes, the rules. OK. Yeah, so some of them. Yeah. Otherwise, if you, if you don't, um, uh, the detailed rules are not on the internet. If okay. you want to do, to do that properly, I can send you, you know, this presentation of explain you better I mean, how uh, the, every step of the of the game. Right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, one thing that I did not hear in your talk yet was the extreme. You see, this is just about weather. Okay. It's important that we know that we learn that weather is, of course, very insecure, uncertain, that weather prediction is very difficult, that there is some chaos, and so on and so on. But it is not yet about the extreme. So it's not about, about climate change yet. So what you did, you did today has to do with just weather. Are you also teaching students, school students, about extreme events, climate change, and, you know, Chaotic systems. Yes. Are you are you doing something? Uh, we have a lot, um, we have many requests also from teachers to have like you know lessons about climate change, and so we do that sometimes, um, or we go sometimes in school or in public event to do like this kind of um, you know lessons, let me say, a workshop, and but. Uh, with the climate change, it's more like an explaining, uh, you know, the, the uh, future of the climate change, the global climate change, and mainly focusing on uh, the two scan impact, you know, in our okay. Mediterranean region and then uh, in uh, the two scan impact. We do not, we, we had like some years ago also a training activity that was promoted by the two scan region. Uh, that was directed, targeted to all the teachers, you know, to all the teachers of middle, uh, middle, no, high school teachers in Tuscany, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were doing like, um, you know, long training, and uh, we um, curated, you know, some aspects uh, about mm -hmm. climate change and uh, um, rain and drought and extreme events. Extreme events teachers but then it was like a special project and um, okay. you know was run for one year and uh, uh -huh. so it's a different approach we do not have like uh, modules these, uh, prepared systematic modules mm -hmm. yeah thank you
Are there more questions? If there are no more questions, I would like to really thank you for this very interesting and yes, he's always giving me orders. Thank you. I will obey. So he's telling me to say that in uh, our web page, our web page of Edus for L, the one, the Ed Ludwigsburg page, there is an interview, there is a video of an interview that he filmed at your institution with me. So remember, yeah. we were together. So yes, we discussed uh, interesting issues. Also, there was this other person, what is his name? Uh, uh, Bernardo, Bernardo Gozzini, who is responsible for having started the institute. So there is this one person he's who's... The director. Yeah, he's the director and he started the whole thing. So very high merit. And uh, the interview was also very interesting and, you know, with lots of different aspects. And I loved it. So it is on the web page of Edus for L. It's in Italian, of course, but it is there. Thank you. Thank you again. And we will see Alberto later on. And I'm very, very happy that he's already there. But we are, go for, we are going for lunch now. <laughs> Andiamo a mangiare adesso, eh, però. Non che tu resti lì. Okay, thank you.